Listen, don't get too ahead of yourself here, buddy. Welcome, or welcome back, if you are returning. My name is Burr, and if you are a fan of MMOs, RPGs, JRPGs, obscure video games, art, or music, then you should subscribe, because that is what we do here. Also, if you don't mind giving a like to this video, that really helps. Go to Lenosha. Go talk to these guys. See if they've learned how to deal with their inner beasts yet. Burr, the Sargib forces have begun marching upon the Tide Gates. This time has come for the decisive battle on which the fate of all Lominsons hangs in the balance. My brother still wrestles with his tenuous grasp on the inner beast, but this crisis will not wait for him. The successful defense of the Tide Gates depends on two warriors being present. I shall not stand idly by either. I will lend what meager aid I can with my healing magics. If your heart is steeled for battle, let us meet my brother outside. Curious Gorge, are you dead moping, sir? Like, come on. <laughs> come on. Oh, come on. No. Hi, friends. My ginormous warrior friends. Burr, you're here at last. Is my brother ready to depart? He was wondering the same thing about you. My preparations are complete. I am ready to lay down my life in Limsa Lominsa's defense. As are we all. The most recent reports tell that the Sahagan plan to use their massive sea beasts to overrun the Tide Gates. Us four will be in charge of defending the Southern Tide Gate. With two warriors by our side, we'll beat those slimy fishbacks into the muddy depths from whence they came. You're fighting too, but what of your wounds? And you said two warriors? Aye, it's true the injuries from our fight with Titan remain, but I reckon the Sahagin's courage won't last for long. As for the warriors, well, we've got two right here, don't we? Worry not, Weisskate. The Sahagin will rue the day they stood before our might. <laughs> All right then, let's head to Camp Skull Valley. The Sahagin won't soon forget this battle. The fate of Limsa Lominsa. I desire nothing more than to see everyone safely th through this battle. But if the beast within takes me within its clutches again... Burr, you know what to do. Gather your strength and drive the fear from me with a mighty slap. It's time to put that training to work. My gosh, he just likes being slapped. This is awful. What a weirdo. I mean, I'm not... Not kink shaming. It's 2024. Yes. <laughs> That's the stuff, Burr. I'll be feeling that in the morning. Come hells or high water, the tide gates will not fall. We'll show this a hog in the iron will of the warrior. Burr, let us report to Commander Falk Breda at once. <laughs> Alright, Falk Breda. Any relation to Mood Breda? This operation depends on the successful defense of both tide gates. You four will see to the southern, while another unit attends to the northern. Although you are few in number, it would be foolish to expect anything but greatness from such storied fighters. All in charge of defending the southern tide gate are here. Let's not waste any more time. Not so fast, Weisskite. You don't think I'd let you take all the glory, do you? Who dead? <gasps> Oh, who's there? Storm Marshal Einzar, you plan to fight alongside us. 
There was nothing I could do to say to stop him. <laughs> that I could say to stop him. Once he has a mind to do something, there's very little that can. My sense of duty will scarce allow you for to bear the weight of Lipsilovitz's fate on your own. My axe will be the first to be greet the Sahagin wave. Oh, he better not die. That would be sad. And what's more, I'd like to see the strength of these two warriors with my own eyes. Something tells me this will be a fight to remember. Storm Marshal, it will be an honor to fight by your side. Our axes will see the people of Lipsilovitz safely through this storm. Brave defenders, this day the Sahagin mean to descend upon us like a tidal wave. But you will stand strong. You will not allow the fishbacks a single ill of that, nor will you give them any quarter. Our fate awaits us at the half stone. To the tide gate. Wish us luck. I'm nauseous. I'm nauseous. Valiant protectors of Limsa Limsa, this day the Sahagin mean to make an end of us. They will come shrieking like the gale and descend upon us with the force of a tidal wave. But will we falter? No. We will stand strong, unwavering until the tide recedes, stained by the blood of the dead. <laughs> nod. Nod, nod, nod. That wasn't at all. <gasps> oh no! Uh oh, here it comes. Zero beast. She's like, oh, am I gonna have to fight you? <laughs> the beast has been tamed. Burr, brother, friends, thank you. Ah, good job. Gorge. <laughs> Best character arc ever. My axe remains steadfast. Friends, stand at my back. My inner beast shall protect you. He's gonna go full take. Full take. Oh my gosh. Ah, the fish bags have brought more pits to be crushed under the warrior's heels. Burr, brother, imbue your axes with your inner fury and show the world a warrior's true wrath. Imbue. Go forward, undaunted warriors. Smash these invaders till naught remains but fodder for the goals. Poker is it a beast? Warrior of Light, Curious Gorge, the battle is won, and the Sahagins scurry back to their moldy caverns. <laughs> Today's victory is owed to the might of our two warriors. Without you, we would not be standing here. Curious Gorge, wear the title of warrior with pride. I couldn't have made it this far alone. It was only thanks to the bravery of my allies that I was able to dominate the beast within. The day will soon come when, with proper training and instruction, all the peoples of Eorzea can choose to walk the path of the warrior. Dad. Speaking of which, with the Sahagin threat dealt with, the Maelstrom can proceed with its plans to train its troops in the way of the warriors. And who better to train them than the two siblings who brought their teachings to Eorzea in the first place? Curious Gorge, Broken Mountain, I invite you to instruct the Maelstrom recruits of the ways of your ancestors. Forge our troops into mighty defenders worthy of their title. You want a jam? Many moons have passed since we came down from our mountain village. And finally, we can begin to realize our dream. Aww. Oh, so sweet. Aye, this is an honor. My brother and I will gladly accept this appointment.
But we have now you're the one who needs to start training harder. <laughs> Listen, don't get too ahead of yourself here, buddy. I dare say you're right. Burr has some proper competition. We'll both fight where we're needed, unbound by fear or hesitation, and in doing so, master the techniques of eld. But I look forward to the day we both reach the peak of our strengths, for then you'll face an opponent worthy of your axe, me. I wonder if I don't want to play you. Let me off of this bird. Good evening, adventurer. What can I do for you? Here you go. The battle standard of the Steel Vigil, tried by flame just as I remember, though there is much I wish I could not remember from that day. In the wake of the calamity, we were all but defenseless, and Savara and Safat saw fit to give us no quarter. I should hope to never again see a battle so bloody. He laid down his life for our nation, for the few of us who escaped with our lives. A true leader to the bitter end, and I will always treasure this year's year spent under him. But I am not worthy of a men mentor such as this, though she may be reluctant to accept it. Lady Lydiette should be the one to have this. I realize she has her own way to deal with grief, and I suspect that's why she did not attend the ceremony. But in all my years sa serving House Helenart, they have never been the sort to go simply let go of a family. Please, friend, take the battle standard to her. I kind of forget who, who actually what this battle standard belonged to. Today, Junior! I shall sleep well tonight. Good for you, sir. The battle center from the Steel Vigil. You are too kind. This is a most unexpected gift. Claude de Bayot was a good man, always ready to put his men's deeds before his own. They were family, and they mourned his loss like family, though I wish they had not followed Francel's example. He insisted on a post in central Curthus, hoping to avenge him someday, and Claude de Bayot's men were quick to follow suit names. But I refuse to dwell on the past. Grieving at gatherings year after year, it's not what he would have wanted. Nay, he would have ha would have me live my own life and fulfill my own dreams. His passing was a great loss to our house. But such hardships are not unfamiliar to us. Times are hard, but we will move forward, and in time Ishkan will become the great nation he believed it could be, free of war. Excuse me, Burr. Moment of your time, if I may. I recently received a special request for assistance with zoological research, but I am at a loss as to how to fulfill it. Are you familiar with Galicats? They bear a striking resemblance to kittens, but with wings. An acquaintance of mine is writing an article to their physiology and requires a sample of their wings for her work. Their sweet appearance relies, belies a rather nasty temperament, and if it were simply a matter of slaying them, I would handle it myself. The problem, however, is that taking a proper sample requires a delicate touch, a certain finesse that is beyond the capabilities of my men and myself. Because you are so fragile, <laughs> because they are so fragile, you may not obtain a proper sample from the first you fell. But I have no doubt a woman of your talents can procure a wing of immaculate quality. You're J.P. Pruitt, the world's greatest hand model. I realize this is a rather personal request, but I would be forever in your debt. Oops, back around some cats. Do, do, do. How far is your search? I realize obtaining an undamaged cat wing is no easy feat. Oh, don't you worry. I got you one. Why? What an extraordinary find. I am pleased to see her persistence has paid off. With this, she can resume her work on Cloudkin. Ah, how forgetful of me not to mention it sooner. This sample is meant for Atolun. <laughs> The renowned naturalist. She's hard at work on a new article for a new Eorzean Geographic and requested a sample as to be delivered with the utmost haste. He can be sure she will hear it was the incomparable Berlin who made possible her latest work on Cloudkin. Ah, my lady Burr, during your absence, a stranger came calling. Upon learning that you are away, he left a message to the effect that he wishes to speak with you and will await you at the Rising Stones. If you have a mind to oblige the stranger, please be careful. I cannot ex well explain why, but it put me ill at ease to simply be near him. Alright, let's see what he's got to say. For two, it is timing as always, Burr. Tatry was about to brief me on the search for our missing comrades. If you would be so kind, then. Absolutely. You'll be pleased to hear that Riol and his men have been making excellent progress. You remember how Phil... <laughs> Philemon 
Helped me to escape the Crystal Braves and Lipsilla Vinsa only to then disappear? Well, according to Riol, she crept aboard a ship bound for Rad's at Han, where she's been hiding ever since. He assures me that it won't be long before we are reunited. As for Ida and Papa Limo, the remains of their link pearls have been found, and in Pearl Lane of all places, Riol thinks they must have disposed of them after escaping from the Royal Promenade. Yes, that would make sense. They could not risk being eavedro eavesdropped upon by our betrayers. We're all but certain they fled the city shortly after, though we still don't have a clue where they went. I see. And what of Thincrin and Mithilia? I'm afraid I have nothing new to share about those two. But it's not all doom and gloom. The good news is we've enlisted the services of a Charlay and scholar, one of the students of Maldesian, to aid in the search, who should be arriving any day now. One of the students, you should say. I should very much like to meet this scholar, if time permits. But first, we must attend to a more pressing matter. Sir Emmerich has summoned the two of us for a private audience. The messenger did not specify what he wished to discuss, only that it was urgent. Assuming you have no objections, Burr, I suggest we proceed to the congregation forthwith. It may have we can meet with the scholar afterwards, agreed? Sure. In that case, I think I'll return to the Forgotten Night for now. Things are liable to fall apart if I'm gone too long, you know. Sure. <laughs> that's that's why you're going there. Of our night's most heavenly. Alright, what's he got to say this time? Thank you for coming. I wish to speak with you both in a place where privacy was assured. We quite understand. What was it that you wished to discuss? With my father's passing, the seat of the Archbishop lies vacant. And so, in accordance with canon law, I have assumed his responsibilities. I should stress that this is a temporary measure. It was never intended that the Lord Commander of the Temple Knights serve in this capacity indefinitely. Quite the opposite. The statutes specify that I should surrender my powers as soon as a conclave of the senior clergy and the high houses have named a new Archbishop. But in light of recent events, that would not seem appropriate. I confess I did not expect you to divulge quite so much quite so soon. The details of the Archbishop's plans, perhaps, but the true origin of the war and all it entails? I, too, had concerns. But when the Warrior of Light is witnessed returning to the capital upon the back of a dragon, one's options are rather limited. Mayhap I could have concealed certain details, but for how long? And at what risk? Should the truth have come to light in the meantime, how would the people have viewed my silence? After a thousand years of lies and secrecy, I could not well abuse their trust and hope to be believed. The time for deception has passed. I only wish the people agreed. That some would deny the truth I had anticipated, but not this many. And among the few who acknowledged that my father had to be stopped, no small number question our methods. If they suspect a coup, it will not be long before some turn to violence. It has already begun, and that on both sides. Men and women of the cloth are being harassed in the streets. Some have even been assaulted in the broom. Hilda and her people have formed a watch to help us maintain order. But such measures will not prevent the unrest from spreading. These people are so violent. I mean, geez. For all our talk of peace. The people remain frightened and confused. For their sake, we must bring the Dragon Song War to a definitive end. And we should be glad to help you, Sir Emmerich. But what precisely would you have us do? We wish to treat with the dragons of Annex Trine. To that end, I would trouble you for an escort and an introduction. Oh, -ho. I mean, it makes sense. 
Annex Trine? You would speak with the Dofnir then? Extend the olive branch for realsies. <laughs> I suppose. We must needs open a dialogue between our peoples. Acting as my representative, Lucia will extend an invitation to their leader that she might visit us here in Ishgard. Were she still with us, I would of course have beseeched Isel's assistance in this matter. But as she is not, I must ask that you aid us in her stead. Will you do us this favor? Not. <laughs> so predictable. Ah, oh, that's right. Bow Thank to me you, again. my friends. Lucia, I leave the rest to you. Oh. Such a faithful knight. In the wake of the Archbishop's fall, the nation of Ishgard trembled, the faith of her people shaken to its very core. For a thousand years had they fought and died, certain of the justice of their cause, only to be told that their holy war was born of the sins of their forefathers. What then for those brave men and women, thus stripped of their righteousness but to despair, to deny the truth and decry its speakers? And what then for those whom they defamed but to hope on, to have faith in a brighter tomorrow? It's so pretty. Like I'm used to being so dark. A tomorrow in which man and dragon might live together in harmony, then as distant as the very stars in the heavens. Yet while we dared to hope, deep within his lair the enemy lay, gathering his strength. Nidhogg, now possessed of his two eyes and the body of the Azure Dragoon, prizes to which he had laid claim at the very hour of the hero's triumph. As desperately as we sought the solace of peace, the great worm craved the misery of war. Nor was he alone in his misbegotten desire. Yeah. Just a lot seemed to be good. <laughs> I know little of the lands these dragons call home. This annex tribe. Had you not agreed to escort me, the coming journey would seem a far more daunting prospect. I confess, I myself once shuddered at the thought of it. Yet even the longest journey begins with the first step, does it not? Ah, but ere we set forth, Bird, I must needs inform our comrade of our plans. ta, -ta. Very well, I shall see to my preparations. Then let us go and bid farewell to Tataru, Burr. Hey all, so I just wanted to say thank you so much for watching and hanging out with me. If you liked this video, please like this video because that'll help gather more folks to the video with the channel. We are aiming for 1k, so we're almost there. Also, if you are new and you haven't yet, please subscribe. Uh, we have a Discord link that is very, very fun. That link will be in the description underneath this video. And I also have all my other social media links and stuff that will be under there as well. And also, I do have a Patreon if you're interested. That link is below and that does help <laughs> get us uh, to support the channel so I can be here and do more stuff with you guys. All right, from uh, all of us to all of you. <laughs> Bye.